Affinity version 2.5 has just been released, and in this video, I'll show you the biggest changes that you should know about. Let's get started. The first update is a long time requested feature. All of the Affinity programs now support variable fonts. A variable font gives you extra options for customizing how the font looks. To see how variable fonts work, let's apply one to this text box. Now, not every font is a variable font, so to see just the variable fonts that are installed on your computer, go ahead and press on this CV. Now all of the fonts being shown are variable ones, so I'll apply one of them to my text box. Now that our text box has a variable font, we can press on this V right up here to open the variable font options. Not every variable font will have all of these options, but most of them should have this weight option, which lets you see different boldness sizes. So make it more bold, a little less. And I think that's such a nice option to have. This font also has a few more sliders you can play with. We have informality. And you can see how this changes up some of the letters. You can also adjust the bounce. <laughs> That's pretty fun. And you also have a slider for spacing. Variable fonts are a lot of fun, but most fonts aren't variable. So to find fonts that are variable, I like to use this page on Google Fonts, which I'll leave a link to in the video description. All of the fonts here already have this variable filter on them. So to see these in action, you can go ahead and type whatever you want right over here. And now you can see that text previewed in all of these different fonts. So you can just go down here and choose a font that you like. And I'm just going to right click on it, and then I'll open this in a new tab. And I'll just do that for a few of these. All right, once you've found all of the fonts you want, you can just go to their tab, then click on Get Font. This will add the font to your cart right up here, and while these fonts are totally free, we still have a cart so that we can download them all at the same time. So I'm just going to continue this with the other fonts. All right, and now we have three different fonts that we can download and I'll just press on this button right here to download all of them. Now that I have all those fonts downloaded, I can go ahead and unzip this file. All right, then I'll open up this folder, and here we have folders for all of the different fonts. So I'll just open this one up, and these font folders should have a .ttf or a .otf file, and we're going to use this to install it on our computer. So to do this on a Mac computer, go ahead and press Command Spacebar, and then you can type in Font, and now you can go ahead and select Font Book. So this is all of the fonts that you have on your computer, and to install this new font, go ahead and click on that file and drag it into the Font Book. And now you can see that font right here. And on Windows computers, it's pretty much the same to install a new font. The only difference is that you'll use the Start menu to search for fonts, and from there you can open the Fonts folder and drag in the font file just like how I did. And now that that font is installed on your computer, the font is immediately available in Affinity, so there is no need to restart the program. Okay, the next update is the ability to add QR codes. We now have a QR code tool that's tucked in with the shape tools. It's at the very bottom right here. Once you have that selected, you can click and drag to add your QR code. And this works just like any of the other shape tools. You can resize it, you can move it around, and you can even change the color. And to change what the QR code does, we can use the context toolbar. As I type, you can see that the QR code instantly updates, which is just so cool. And you can use QR codes for more than just URLs. If you go right up here to the type, 
You can actually change this to any of these different options. So I'm going to click on email, and then we can go ahead and type in a few things here. So now when people use this QR code, it will start an email with the information that I entered. And finally, version 2.5 adds a new tool to Affinity Designer, which allows you to change the width of a stroke. So I'm just going to draw out a stroke using the pen tool. And now I can grab our new tool, the Stroke Width tool. Using this tool, you can go over any of these nodes and then click and drag to increase or decrease the stroke width. And you can see that as I'm doing this to this first node, it makes the whole line bigger. But if you just go over to the next node, you can make that one smaller. And you can go ahead and customize this however you'd like. You can even click on the line to add a new node, and then click and drag to adjust the width at that point. So those are my favorite changes in Affinity version 2.5. Let me know in the comments what you're most excited for, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.